Let's look at some of the results you get from a dynamic time history analysis. What I have in this model is a simple cantilever beam I've broken into several short lengths, and I have a tip load of 10 kips applied at the end. I've also put that 10 kip load in a live load case L. Let's look at the time history case a little bit more by going to the load case manager. Under dynamic cases, if we take a look at it, what we have is a force loading function where we start out at zero and very quickly at the time of 0.1 second, we ramp the force up to 1.0 times the load value, which is 10 kips, and then we drop it back off to zero at 0.2 seconds. I've set up 50 time steps at 0.02 seconds per step. My forcing function was imported through a data text file. My numar quantities are 0 0.5, 0 0.25, and 0 0.01 for a bit of damping. So that's my basic load case. So now let's look at the results. If we go to the results view, we can look at the dynamic history results. And for each time step, then, we'll have a different set of results. And you can see they're stepping by the value we set up, and they go all the way through to one second. Whenever you have a time history case, you're also going to get an envelope case for the lowest values and for the highest values. So those are always created by default. One of the nice things we can do with the time history case is produce an animated view. So the way we do that is we'll do right mouse button in the result view. And for the animation, we're going to pick a, rather than a user defined, we want to use real time animation. So the vibrations that we're going to see are, are at a speed of the real time vibration. So I'll say, okay. And when I do that, uh, it takes a second to generate the various frames in the animation, which is happening right now. Now, when the animating frames are created, we're seeing the actual animation and we're seeing the low, the tip deflect down and then vibrate back and the effect of damping canceling out the motion. One of the other things we can do after we stop the animation, which is right mouse button stop animation, is we can do node plots in time history analysis and look how the node moved over time. So if we select a node, this tip node, right mouse button select node plot, we can see a plot of node displacement versus time. And we're seeing how it deflected down initially at 0.14 seconds, that's 0.04 seconds after the load was released, to minus 8.6 inches. We'll take a look at that and compare it with live load in just a second. But as we see then, the deflected shape is slowly um, tapering off to zero, showing the effects of damping. And let's compare this 8.6 inch deflection to what we have for a live load deflection. So I'm going to go back to the result view and select on the live load case, select the node. And if we take a look, 7.15 is the static displacement we get out of the 10 kip load. So you can see we jumped to 8.6 from 7.1, showing you the inertial effects of applying that load quickly.